Maybe some of you have seen this girl before, probably as an internet meme, either in the form of this real life photo or as an illustration. But how many of you actually know the backstory behind her? In 2004, this girl, who would eventually be known as Nevada-tan, took the life of one of her classmates due to what was originally a simple online argument. Once her photo was leaked online, people would comment on how childlike and adorable she was for a killer, and she would gather a certain fan base, with people creating illustrations of her idolizing her as Nevada-tan. This was one of the first incidents in Japan in which an online community run by children would lead to serious consequences, causing controversy regarding this new emerging technology, which was the internet. This is the story of the Nevada-tan incident. Natsumi Tsuji was born into a small village on the edge of Sasebo City in 1993. Natsumi's family consisted of herself, her older sister, her parents, and her grandmother. Because her parents were both working full time, her grandmother was the main caretaker of the two children. Also, due to the fact that her house was located far away from the school she attended, she was one of the few students that would go to school by bus, which resulted in her having little interaction with her friends after school. Maybe due to this lack of interaction with her parents and friends, Natsumi grew into a rather shy and introverted girl. But nonetheless, she would do relatively well in school. And her teachers saw her as an ordinary kid. When Natsumi was in fourth grade, a new girl transferred to her school, Satomi Mitarai. Satomi had a social, outgoing personality, and because the two girls shared a liking of drawing, they immediately became close, joining the school's basketball club together, and Satomi was one of the few friends Natsumi had interactions with outside of school. However, when Natsumi was in her fifth grade, Her parents made her quit the basketball team, so she could focus more on her studies. Her classmates would note that from around this period in time, Natsumi would become more detached, not participating in class proactively, and would become noticeably violent, particularly towards her male classmates. Leaving the basketball team and spending less time with her friends would result in Natsumi diving deeper into her other hobby computers and the internet. Her father had bought her a personal computer, which was uncommon for a child to have at the time, and ever since she was obsessed with it. Natsumi would maintain connections with her friends through the internet, where her friend group would chat and manage blogs together. Social media was not really a thing yet in 2004, and internet communities were mostly made up of message boards and blog sites. Although Natsumi was an introverted girl at school, She would express her feelings more openly online, posting comments regarding discontent towards her classmates on her personal blog. In May of 2004, Natsumi jumped onto Satomi's back when fooling around, to which Satomi commented on how heavy Natsumi was. This brief interaction would end there in person, but would lead to conflict online. The two girls would trade passive aggressive comments. And because they were sharing the passwords to their accounts, Natsumi would go on to delete posts made by Satomi, eventually, deleting Satomi's account altogether when Satomi continued to taunt her. On a separate occasion, Natsumi had an argument with another girl within their friend group, and Satomi, already upset about the online dispute, took the other friend's side, essentially, outcasting Natsumi from this friend group. Exiled from the only friend group she was a part of, Natsumi would spend more and more time alone at home. She would take interest in the popular novel, Battle Royale, in which classmates are forced to fight each other until only one is left standing. She would even post her own fanfiction version of the novel online, with characters strongly resembling her classmates in real life. Some have speculated her interest in this novel may have affected her actions that were to come. On June 1st, 2004, While everyone was preparing for lunch, Natsumi told Satomi she'd like a word in private. The two girls moved to an empty room, where Natsumi would close the curtains and have Satomi sit in a chair. Natsumi would then move behind her former friend, put her left hand over Satomi's eyes, and with her right hand shoves a box cutter 10 centimeters or 4 inches into Satomi's neck. 
Satomi was caught totally by surprise, and tries her best to fight back, receiving further cuts to her hands and arms. But the initial stab wound was so deep she would pass out from loss of blood before long. Natsumi would continue to observe her victim for the next 15 minutes, as if to confirm she did enough damage. By this time lunch had begun, and their teacher notices the two girls were missing. Just as the teacher goes into the hallway to look for them, Natsumi is standing there in front of the door, drenched in blood, with the box cutter still in hand. The teacher initially presumes the girl had used the box cutter on herself, but when questioned, Natsumi would mumble, It isn't my blood, and points to the other room that Satomi was in. When the teacher goes to investigate, she finds Satomi lying in a pool of blood. The injuries were severe. The initial stab to her neck was 10 centimeters deep and almost 10 centimeters wide. In other words, more than half of the area of the girl's neck had been cut open. The girl also had defense wounds on her hands, deep enough to expose the bones. Satomi was still breathing when the teacher found her, but by the time the ambulance arrives, she had gone cold. Meanwhile, Natsumi had been escorted to the infirmary, where she was cleaned up and given a new set of clothing to change into. As the school nurse was washing the blood off, Natsumi could be heard mumbling, Satomi is going to die, what is going to happen to me? As the police arrive on scene, Natsumi is taken to the principal's office for questioning, where she admits to murdering Satomi. She claims to have been planning the assault for a while now, considering various methods such as strangling or using something like an ice pick, but ultimately settled on the box cutter. Natsumi would be taken into custody for further questioning and interviews. During a visitation with a lawyer appointed to her, she would express that she was sorry for what she had done, and when asked what she wanted to do from here on, would claim, I just want to live an ordinary life. The lawyer would later give his impression of Natsumi as somewhat childlike for her age, but overall a regular 11-year-old girl. A mental evaluation of Natsumi would reveal that although she did display some difficulty in controlling her emotions, it wasn't to the point of indicating any disorder. As news of this incident reached the public, someone leaked photos of Natsumi onto the internet. Many netizens would remark on how adorable and harmless the girl appeared to be, and because she was wearing a sweatshirt with Nevada on it, would nickname her as Nevadatan. Nevadatan would gather a cult-like fanbase online, with many illustrations of her being drawn. Some people would even cosplay as Nevadatan at events. The wider public, which in 2004 was still very unfamiliar with internet culture, was shocked at how online communities were in some ways glorifying a killer, giving the internet and people who use it a negative image. Because juvenile laws in Japan at the time did not allow sending 11-year-olds to juvenile prison, Natsumi would be sent to a facility to aid troubled children, where she would display good behavior and very little homesickness that most children her age would experience when living away from their parents at the age of 11. Natsumi would graduate junior high from within that facility and was given a new identity and released. She would be in her 30s by now, and walks among us in society to this day. Satomi's father had lost his wife to cancer three years prior, and with his daughter being brutally murdered at such a young age, must have been devastated. Because he worked at a newspaper company, one of his co-workers would later publish a book regarding the case, titled, I am willing to accept your apology at any time, which includes interviews from Satomi's father and how he is coping with the aftershock of the incident. Due to the nature of this incident originating from an online dispute, and the somewhat twisted interpretation and hype over the culprit online, combined with a general skepticism towards the internet at the time, this case caused significant debate over how children should be protected from online influences. This incident would also influence juvenile laws, which were revised in 2007 to allow sending 11-year-olds to juvenile prison in the case of murder. What do you think of the case? Was there anything adults could do to prevent Nevadatan from committing her crime? Let me know in the comments below. A big thank you to Korbachu and my other Patreons for supporting this channel. 
your support is greatly appreciated. As always, thank you for watching until the end. Please like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next episode. I'll see you next time.